morning everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this webinar on complementary approaches and today's topic is Tai Chi. I've got Jane Monk with me today and she'll be taking over in a minute. I can't see you yet, Jane. Okay. She just waved. She's a, <laughs> she's a newbie. <laughs> we start all our programs with our acknowledgement. We acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians, past and present, on whose lands we meet today. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and the relationship of Aboriginal people to country and respect the cultural authority of the elders in each community. These programs um, are presented by external uh, experts that are outside of MS. So we always just put a little um, advice slide here that in regard to your particular situation you might need some specific advice. We can give some general information but in terms of applying it to you and your situation we would say have a chat to your health practitioners to make it um, particularly applicable in your situation. Complementary and alternative medicine, um, it's worth having a chat as we start about these types of approaches. Complementary approaches would be seen as things that people use alongside their traditional medicines and alternative approaches are things that you would use instead of traditional approaches. And MS would probably always encourage you to consider complementary approaches. There's lots of strong evidence supporting the, um, the traditional medicine approach to managing MS, but there are lots of complementary things that you can do alongside that treatment to actually minimise your symptoms, to live well with your chronic illness and to enhance the um, effectiveness of other treatments you might be experiencing. Some interesting information exists in this publication, MS in Focus and there's an addition that is specifically on complementary approaches. If you um, aren't aware of the MS International Federation, MSIF for Federation, that's a really good website to Google and have a look at. And the MS in Focus is their publication that they put out a few times a year and you can register to receive that and you can also look up back issues. So this, the information that I'll present you today has come from this issue which was actually in 2010 but it's still very relevant and there's been some interesting um, projects around complementary approaches. One of the issues is that there hasn't been a lot of research done so we, we like to look for the evidence to support complementary approaches and that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. So I'll just read a couple of quotes if that's okay. Studies in many different countries have documented that complementary approaches and the use of those is actually common within people with multiple sclerosis. And in the US, one half, half to three quarters of people with MS use some form of complementary approach. Same sort of numbers in Europe and actually the same sort of numbers in Canada and Australia. So up to three quarters of people, of, so three out of four people with MS look to some sort of complementary approach to assist them as well. And there's been one, as a systematic review that was conducted, it was back in 2000, but it was a systematic review of complementary and alternative therapies used in the treatment of MS that actually noted that the strength of complementary approaches actually lies in the, the fact that it can improve quality of life. And that's across the board. Sorry, there's that magazine. So if you look up msif.org, you'll find that magazine and you'll be able to search your way to, to downloading that issue. There's a, an article in the magazine that highlights some of the concerns but also some of the potentially better, the benefits 
of complementary approaches. Alan Bowling is the medical director of the MS service and he's also the director of the complementary and alternative medicine service in Colorado at the Colorado Neurological Institute. He's got a whole lot of other titles as well but there's far too many to read. He talks about the concerns that he has when people who are providing complementary information, they might have biases, they might have financial incentives, or they might actually have limitations in their knowledge base that leads them to provide inaccurate and sometimes dangerous information. So we want to be looking at complementary approaches that have got a bit of backing, a bit of evidence around them, not just someone's, um, would I say, snake oil that has been shown to be helpful in a whole lot of things. Mm, I always get suspicious if it's going to help a whole lot of things. You want to know that it's been proven to help in our situation with multiple sclerosis. So he then talks also about the potential benefits are less likely to be disease modifying, they are more likely to be symptomatic. And there's some strong evidence growing around um, how these approaches are assisting in managing symptoms. He also encourages everybody to talk to their GPs, their neurologists about approaches that they're trying because it's really important to make sure that if you're going to be trying something it doesn't counteract one of the treatments you might be on, that it is going to be helpful. And they will really know that. I think in the past people were really afraid of telling their GPs or their neurologists when they wanted to try something because they thought that they would be told not to. I don't think that applies anymore. I think that GPs and neurologists are actually also really interested in how um, other approaches can be beneficial for helping um, optimised treatments that people might be on. This is a table of symptoms that people might experience when they're living with MS and then complementary approaches that have actually had some research or some backing to demonstrate their effectiveness and you see Tai Chi on there. So we, we are trying to pick things to to show you that have got some evidence around their effectiveness and their benefit for people with MS. Now in the in this sort of area, the, the articles that we can find actually link Tai Chi to sleep, but Jane will talk about the, the wider benefits. There's just a definition and I'm sure Jane will go through this as well. When you look up what is Tai Chi, it's a slow, smooth series of gentle, rhythmic physical exercises and stretches that are coordinated with breathing. Is that a fair? Yeah, that's pretty good description. <laughs> and again, from this MS in Focus publication, Tai Chi would probably fall under the category of a mind-body therapy. So there is growing evidence around the benefits of mind-body therapies, of which Tai Chi is one. So one that I found was a non-randomised, non non-controlled study. Now I guess you always worry about that, but it's better to have some sort of evidence than none. They looked at 19 people who undertook an eight-week Tai Chi program. And at the end of that eight weeks, the participants experienced improvement in their walking speed, their flexibility, their energy and their mental health. So that's all good. Then there was another study done um, again around Tai Chi and this is the one that's indicated in that previous slide that's showing that participants who attended three 60 minute Tai Chi sessions over a 24 week period, that, I don't know actually I haven't given enough information there have I to work out how often those sessions were but by participating in Tai Chi they, they reported improvements in their sleep duration. So that's a good thing too. If you're experiencing any problems with sleep, Tai Chi might be something that you explore to see if it is beneficial for you. Mind you, you can have a look up that, contact our library for that resource and you can have a proper read of that article. So in general, 
mind-body therapies are associated with low physical and emotional risk, and they're relatively low cost. I always put a proviso in there. I'm, I get anxious about any programs where they want you to join up and pay up front for a 10-week program, because if it doesn't suit you, you're tied in and you've spent your money. So I would always encourage people that if you're wanting to try something new, ask for a trial session, because you've got to check that it's something that is suitable for you. So any, any of these mind-body therapies, and particularly today Tai Chi, they're, they're not prohibitively expensive and they are supported by some promising, albeit preliminary evidence. So that's encouraging too. So I'm going to pass over. I'm going to turn off my camera and I'll turn on James. I'll still be here and I would encourage you throughout the whole program to be popping in um, any questions that you have for Jane and we will address them. And then at the end, Jane's going to do a demonstration as well. Great. Great. So you can change the slides by clicking on that as well. Beautiful. Thanks, Andrea. And hello, everyone. And thank you, Andrea, for providing this opportunity to share something about Tai Chi with you all. And a big thanks to the Nerve Centre for providing this opportunity. So um, here's a slide that just goes through a little bit of what I'm going to cover uh, you know, between now and you know, the next 45 minutes. So I'll give you a little bit of my own background and also a bit of a brief history of Tai Chi, have a look at some of the key benefits and the principles of Tai Chi that really help to bring about the benefits to help understand that a bit more. And then I'm going to do a little demo and really provide an opportunity, hopefully for all of you or any of you who'd like to, to have a go at it because it's nothing like actually experiencing it yourself to have a sense of whether it's something that will um, suit you and work for you. And then I understand you can ask questions throughout and uh, Andrew let me know if there's any questions of clarification that you have as I work through these slides um, and then there'll also be some time for questions at the end as well. So a little bit of, first of all about, um, a little bit about me actually probably too. I actually trained as a physiotherapist in my earlier, you know, quite a few years ago. So I have a deep appreciation of the Western mode of um, health and then came across Tai Chi in the mid-90s and just fell in love with it. I was working full time and had been very busy in my life at that time and I'd come home from work and just feel really exhausted and think, oh, I don't really want to go out. But I'd take myself off to my Tai Chi class and at the end of the Tai Chi, I just found I'd feel so calm and focused and grounded and have a sense that my body had been given a good workout. but. I wasn't hurting or anything like that. Like it's such a gentle form of exercise, and yet it really um, gives your body a good workout at the same time. So I just fell in love with it. I did it for three years back then, and then uh, the Tai Chi instructor back then actually became unwell, and the classes stopped, and life got in the way. And and then I came across the art of harmony Tai Chi uh, back in about well, about 12 years ago and have been doing Tai Chi with Master Conrad Dawn, who runs the Art of Harmony Tai Chi Centre. And so I've been doing it continuously, you know, since then, and, and then a few years ago I had an opportunity to become an assistant instructor under Conrad. So we offer con um, Tai Chi sessions out in the eastern suburbs, and, and Conrad's been doing that since 1998. Uh, so I've clocked up about 15 years experience of Tai Chi and it's just been so great for me personally and now I get to run classes and mainly in retirement villages. Um, I run some sitting down Tai Chi classes as well as standing up depending on just the physical ability of the people who uh, come to the various classes. And of course we have one here at the Nerve Centre on a Monday as well and we also run some public classes. So that's a little bit about me and the art of harmony. So let's now have a look at, well, where did Tai Chi come from? And it's actually around 6,000 years old. So the ancient Chinese uh, developed this uh, method of exercise 
and their aim in doing that was to promote health. They sort of figured in their wisdom, I believe, that it's far better to prevent injury and disease if possible rather than wait until we get sick and then try and help us feel, you know, get better then. So Tai Chi is designed as a, a health, um, you know, promotion and uh, a prevention sort of method, if you like. And in China, various families in China sort of had developed their own styles of Tai Chi. So uh, if you've heard about Tai Chi before, you may have uh, come across you know, Qin style, Sun style, Yang style and Wong style. So they are four different families that uh, handed, like developed styles of Tai Chi and then handed those styles, like taught their children and their children. So I've got passed down from generation to generation within villages within uh, China. Uh, so, we, so there's four different styles for the start, but of course then in each style there's also various different forms and now like there's countless number of different forms of Tai Chi. You know, think about them in terms of like different dances, you know, you can have um, you know, country dancing, but within country dancing, you know, you could have the barn dance and the pride of Erin. Um, so you can have various different dances within a style called, you know, country dancing. Well, it's a bit like that in Tai Chi. You know, you can have a Chen style, but then you can have various sort of forms of um, Chen style Tai Chi. But it's interesting that it's only really been in the last hundred years that Tai Chi has actually moved out of China and spread across the globe. and becoming increasingly popular. And I think, uh, you know, as Andrew's already picked up, there's now starting, just gradually starting to be a bit more Western medicine research into the benefits of Tai Chi. And, um, you know, that's starting to grow, which is fantastic because it's starting to verify what people have reported for so long, but, you know, there just hadn't been up until more recently, um, you know, really good scientific research about it. So just a little bit more about these terms to, to, and, and as background to Tai Chi. You may hear the term um, Tai Chi Shigong uh, and that's actually based on traditional Chinese medicine health exercises. And that's a distinct approach um, compared to Tai Chi Chuan which is based on Qigong, but also martial arts. It, it sort of came from more a martial art background. But notice that Tai Chi is in both terms. So we're going to actually have a look now at what do these terms mean in, you know, in Chinese. So the word Tai Chi in Chinese means supreme ultimate, you know, or the best, if you like. And the word Chuan it, uh, means fist or, uh, you know, we think about it as it's like a self-defense boxing martial art form. So Tai Chi Chuan, that sort of uh, category of Tai Chi is more based on, came from a martial arts sort of background. The word Qigong, so the first part, Qi, in Chinese, and that's different as you can see in the spelling from the qi that's in the word tai chi. So in the word qigong, the qi actually is a Chinese word for energy or life force. You know, in our Western um, way of thinking, we could even think about it in terms of electrical energy or and or chemical energy that moves through our body, that actually helps our body um, function and um, be healthy. So qi, uh, this energy, is a key element in understanding how Tai Chi works. So we'll come to that a little bit more later as well. And the word, the other part of this word qigong, gong, means to cultivate. So qigong means to cultivate um, energy, life force. And so Tai Chi, qigong, um, is the ancient Chinese saying, this is the best way to cultivate energy, life force energy. So hope that helps to understand the terminology a little bit more. So here's a list of uh, some of the common benefits that people report uh, 
experiencing after doing Tai Chi. So there's increased strength, coordination, balance, flexibility, and then there's also this inner calm and peace that people also report um, feeling at the end of the Tai Chi class. Uh, that seems to also, for some, um, bring about, for those who've got increased blood pressure, it actually seems to um, bring about a reduced blood pressure. And then the other, actually we ran a little survey for the Art of Harmony just last term, and one of the other benefits that um, nearly everyone reported was social connection. Of, uh, you know, they really enjoyed coming to Tai Chi classes because of the connections that they made with people. And I just, I think I, my, my theory about that is that when people experience Tai Chi and have that sense of becoming calmer, um, in a way our, we more easily connect with people. And so there's, um, there's a lovely, gentle way of, of being with people when we shared a Tai Chi class together. So that was another little one. Not that it's been scientifically proven that this is more, uh, you know, being reported by people uh, that have been doing Tai Chi. So here's some of the benefits, but I want to now look at the principles and explain my understanding of how the principles of Tai Chi actually can lead to the benefits. and. Here I can sort of draw a little bit on my physio background as well. But first of all, as, as we know and as defined by Andrea, Tai Chi mark are the slow, smooth movements. Uh, so Tai Chi Shigong in particular is just all smooth, slow movements. And what happens when we move our limbs slowly is that the smaller muscles in our limbs get a chance to work. You know, when we're doing more like faster work or lifting work, then uh, the bigger power muscles uh, in our body are the ones that perform that in those tasks for us. But when we're actually moving more slowly and actually trying to have our limbs move slowly and continuously, the smaller muscles in our limbs actually get a chance to get activated because the power muscles are quieter. And so when we're doing Tai Chi, um, you know, over time those small muscles improve in their strength, which actually can then improve more the overall strength. So slow, smooth movements is um, one big, one of the three, you know, three key principles of performing Tai Chi. The second is having the breath um, flow with the movement. So uh, you know, Tai Chi when we do the moves, I don't know whether I'll move back a little bit, but you know, you might have a movement with the arms coming up and then moving down. And so we're encouraged to breathe in as our hands move up and breathe out as the hands move down. So there's a, a flowing breath with the movement as well. And you know, the, the two of these together in particular, uh, you know, the ancient Chinese believe that um, by having these slow, continuous movements and having the breath follow the movement and flow with the movement, that uh, that keeps the energy flowing in our bodies and keeps us healthier. We can think about it in terms of the Western mode of, of health. You know, we, we hear about how if toxins build up in our muscles because we've been either tense and um, and you know when our muscles are, are contracted for prolonged periods of time, toxins can build up, and that doesn't help our muscles stay healthy. So we're sort of familiar with that principle of uh, you know if something gets stuck and is not moving, then uh, our bodies are not as happy. So in a sense, there's a parallel here between our Western mode of 
thinking about health and the ancient Chinese way of thinking about it as well. But the link is that if we keep things moving in a flowing way, then we're going to be healthier. Our bodies are going to be happier. The third principle is engagement of the mind. And this happens in a number of ways in Tai Chi. Uh, you may have become, you know, been aware of some of the Tai Chi forms. They often draw on images from nature. So, for example, you know, there's um, wild goose spread wings, and uh, there's a pushing the waves, bringing home the tide. So they'll have these images of nature while they do the movements. And that's uh, deliberately done to help engage our mind with an image as we move. And the, what's behind that is that as we engage our mind with what we're doing in the present, that's what helps us become calmer. The other things that help engage our mind is particularly early on when we're learning Tai Chi is actually focusing on now, what's going on with that move? What do I do then with my hands? And so just focusing on, you know, what I'm, what's actually going on with the move very early on actually engages the mind in the present. The other thing that engages the mind, two more, and it actually goes back to our first two principles, we're not used to moving slowly. You know, in our busy world where we're often... Uh, you know, have feeling under pressure, doing things or whatever, but having to focus on moving our limbs slowly engages the mind as well. And then to add to that, focusing on having the breath flow with the movement is another level of engaging the mind. Now, not that you sort of think, oh, how can I think about all those things at the one time? And you actually don't have to. Uh, just even one of those, um, whether it be focusing on slow, smooth movements or just focusing on keeping on breathing, because often when we are uh, learning things, um, we can hold our breath. That's very common. People report that when they're learning something new, they notice that they're holding their breath. So even just focusing on, keeping on breathing, engages the mind as well. And then there's these image, beautiful images from nature that can also engage our mind. The reason why I love these principles is that it actually releases us from having to get the move right. And, you know, in our Western way of thinking, uh, there's so much in our, our world that has us think, oh, I've got to get it right, or, oh, no, I got that wrong. <laughs> well, the beauty about Tai Chi is you can see from these three principles is that just by focusing on these three principles, you don't have to get the move right to get the benefit. And hence why the benefit starts right from day one. So just, and, and you know, that's why I'd like to, you know, as fairly soon when I've just finished this sort of background theory a bit about it, to actually invite you to uh, actually have a go at some Tai Chi moves uh, and know that just simply by focusing on moving slowly and keeping on breathing, that there can be a benefit that starts straight away. And then over time, you know, as, as I like, I've been now clocked up 15 years of Tai Chi, but I keep, there's still so much more to learn, which is what I love about Tai Chi, because it fosters, it provides an opportunity to be um, in learning mode, but in knowing that uh, I don't have to get it right. Uh, that the focus of um, just learning brings benefit in and of itself. So they're the principles. But before, um, and have there been any questions so far? No, there haven't. Okay. I think people have been 
enjoy. <laughs> but don't forget, you can type in your questions and I can pose them to Jane. So what we might then do is um, move in and actually have a look at doing some Tai Chi moves. But just a couple of things to say before we do that. And that is, first of all, it's very important that you only do what's comfortable for you. So, uh, for example, you know, and here I will move back now so that you can see my upper body more. Mm -hmm. So, better. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we can okay. see you. Yep, and, and actually what I might, yeah, that's right. So, uh, so if, for example, I do a move that takes my hands above my head like this, then but your arms are only happy to go to here, then you just go to here. So only, you know, Tai Chi is very adaptable to suit whatever your body is happy to do at this kind of time. So uh, just do work within the range that your body is happy with. And uh, and if anything hurts, just stop, because Tai Chi is not meant to cause any pain at all. So if anything hurts, just stop. Uh, when I'm running, a, say, for example, a half-hour class, I, and particularly when people first start, I also say to people, if you get tired, just sit down and rest. That uh, if it's not meant to wear you out at all. It, in fact, the benefit comes from you know the slow, gentle movements. Uh, and if you do find that you need to move that your you know your arms are just not happy to do at the moment, what you can do is imagine the move. Imagine your body doing the move. And what they're finding now, and there's some research around this as well, that actually when we imagine the move, there's physiological changes that happen in our muscles. So uh, it's not even a waste of time just sitting and imagining the move if that's what suits you right now. So with those little you know, things to keep in mind, uh, let's do a little bit of Tai Chi. So just a few principles about how to approach a Tai Chi session in a way that will maximise the benefit for you and also keep you safe. So the first principle is that only ever do what is comfortable for you to do. So you are the one who knows your body best. So if I move my hands up like so, but your shoulders say, I can only go this far, or maybe only go this far, then just do what your body says it's happy to do. And if anything hurts at all, please stop immediately and rest. What they found in medical research now is that even imagining movements make changes in physiologically in our muscles. So if you're not, if your body is not happy to physically do the full extent of a move that I might do, then you might just take it to here and imagine, picture your arms going right up. And it, it's amazing that even imagining moves actually brings about some physiological changes. So principle number one, just do what your body's happy to do. Principle number two is that Tai Chi moves are done slowly and smoothly. And that actually surprisingly helps to build strength. When we move quickly and with power, the big groups of muscles are the ones that are activated and work. When we move slowly and really focus uh, on producing slow, smooth movements, 
then the smaller muscles in our arms and legs get a chance to work and hence our overall strength can increase. So slow, even movements is uh, a, a very foundational feature of Tai Chi. And the third, uh, the third principle is the breath. So our breath is actually a really important component of the practice of Tai Chi. Now, when we're just learning Tai Chi, we will have, you'll have enough to focus on without worrying too much about what your breath is doing, other than making sure that you're continuing to breathe. Um, but as you become, as the weeks of this webinar series unfolds, then you, you know, I'll do some reminding of perhaps starting to focus on breathing in flow with the move. So generally things will happen like breathing in as our arms are moving up, breathing out as they go down, you know, as a general principle. But as I said, be aware that breathing is a very important part of Tai Chi. And unless you've been doing Tai Chi for a while and that these movements have already become familiar, just focusing on the, um, the movements themselves will be certainly sufficient for you um, today and for the next couple of weeks at least. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's probably enough of talking, I think it might be time to actually get into some moves. So we usually start our Tai Chi practice with a Tai Chi salute and it's just like a marking of um, a beginning and respect for the space in which we're going to be doing Tai Chi. Um, actually by the way may I mention that uh, when I've done this webinar before, what we've found is that it doesn't quite work to have music playing even from like here in this space. It seems to interfere with the, um, the volume and the clarity of what I'm seeing. However, if you have any favourite relaxing music um, that you like to listen to while doing something like Tai Chi, please feel free to um, perhaps next week think about a piece of music that goes for about half an hour that you might like to um, play while um, undertaking this session. Yeah, I think that's probably enough as it is. So let's do our Tai Chi salute. So this Tai Chi salute is just the only move I'll do that won't be a mirror image move. So if you make a right, loose right fist, you should be able to sort of see, you know, a, a hole between your, you know, your palm and your finger. So it's just a loose right fist. And the thumb is just gently resting on the fingertips. So that's at chest height. That's the right hand. The left hand is an open palm. And we bring the two together with the knuckles connecting. So the base of the knuckles here, the base of the fingers, and the, the little knobbly knuckles um, on your right hand, if you connect them together, and here you might see that my thumb is just resting over the little hollow made by my right hand. So it's a bit like if you're familiar with the yin and yang sign of, of here, the, the Chinese yin and yang sign, which is having opposites in balance. This is our hands creating a yin and yang symbol. And then we just move the shoulders forward. If you're standing, just push the hips back. And that's just a little mark of a beginning of our Tai Chi practice. Then let's do some quiet breathing. So just resting the hands on the chest and turning your attention to the sensation of breathing. 
you may wish to slowly count perhaps to four as you breathe in at your own pace and counting to four as you breathe out. So just gentle focus on the sensation of breathing. And arms down, and this time they're down to the side. So we'll do what's called the breath regulator, just following me, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And we'll do that routine two more times. In, out. One more. Bring the hands to rest either on your lap if you're sitting or down by your side if you're standing. The next warm up is called the butterfly. So you cross the wrists and it's sort of like we're going to be making like a bit of a butterfly um, action or wing. The wings of birds or butterflies. We're going to do eight of these. And that's the eight. So cross the wrists, separate and back down to our resting place. So we're going to do now some series of some a combination of different rotations and stretches. Just gently, again, just doing what your body is comfortable to do. So we start with crossing the wrists in front, palms in. And then rolling the palms out and having a big, big circle as big as your body's happy to go. Then cross the wrists in front. And big stretch in a circle. And bringing the hands back to the resting place. Now form a triangle with your thumb and index finger and stretch the arms out so that you can sort of like look through that triangle. Then stretching forward, then stretching up, looking through the triangle. And coming back to look forward and then bringing the triangle down towards the floor keeping on looking through the triangle and now only go as far as you're comfortable to go just giving a stretch downward and then release the hands 
and just let the arms um, hang loose. In fact, you might even just let your whole body just loosen up a little bit. Then form the triangle again, looking through the triangle, then bringing the triangle back up to horizontal or the arms horizontal, looking through, then up to the, looking up, and release, bringing both hands down back to the resting place. Now, forming loose fists with both hands down by the side, bring the hands up above the head, then turn at the waist as you lower the hands, then turn around to the other corner and lift the hands. Turn and down. And for those standing, the challenge is to keep the hips facing forward. So the movement, the turning is just at the waist. Down, turn and up. Now coming back to the front and now we're going to go back the other way. So turning, lowering, turning and lifting. Turn, lower. Turn, lift. One more each side. Turn, lower. And turn, lift. And back to the centre and lower the hands down to rest on the lap. We'll do some wrist and elbow rotations. So starting with palms up, bringing the backs of the hands together, rolling them around and then palms up. So that's one. We'll do four this way and then we're going to reverse. So that's two. Backs of the hands together, three. And four. Now we'll go back the other way. So roll the palms together, go down, up and over. And that's the last one, lowering the hands back to the starting position. And then we'll just do some ankle rotation. So again, if you're standing, if you're unsteady in any way, you may even wish to just rest a hand somewhere on a nearby chair, desk or wall. Um, so the idea is that we just uh, have the um, ball of the foot resting and we rotate the ankle around in a circle, three, and we'll do eight each way. Six, seven, eight, and then change direction. Just slow, smooth movements. Okay, then change sides. Change direction.
and eight, coming back to the resting place. We'll now do some, um, uh, it's part of an eight form stretch um, form of Tai Chi. So just, it can help if you're comfortable to rest with palms up for this first um, one, which is a neck uh, stretch. So just starting with sinking the shoulders and just drawing yourself up tall through the crown of the head. Then slowly curl the chin down towards the chest. Back to the center and then slowly pointing the chin towards the ceiling. Center. Center. And center. Looking over the shoulder and looking out of the corner of your eye, still sinking the shoulders. And center. 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 And center. The next one is called lifting the sky. So this introduces what is also a very common feature of Tai Chi, and that is some nature images that uh, engage our mind that can also enhance the benefit of Tai Chi. So we start with hands in front and we trace a circle in front, palms up but then rolling out so that the palms end up towards the ceiling and release. And we're going to do four of these. It's called lifting the sky, a circle in front. Rolling the palms out and up, stretching up, looking up, and release. Release. And release, bending the bow, palms facing each other, take the arms to the side, then form loose fists, drawing back the bow with a straight line between the fist and the elbow point. And release. Going to go to the other side, drawing back the bow, opening the chest, and release. Once more each side. Release. And release. Next one is swinging the weight. So form loose fists on the outside of the knee and trace a circle. With those standing, keep your knees 
a little bent, allow the waist to direct the circle and change direction. One more circle each way. And then slowly rising up and returning to the resting place. So then we'll do um, a punching to the front. So starting with one hand forward, palms up, the other hand by the waist. And if you're standing, perhaps put your feet a little bit further apart. So breathe in and hold. Curl the fists and punch forward. Then open both palms as you breathe out. So breathe in, hold. Punch forward, breathe out, open palms. Again, breathe in. Breathe out. And in. And out. Hands down, back to the resting place. And have a little bit of a shake out. Hope you're feeling that you've blown some cobwebs away. So we're going to now do a form called the Lotus. It's one of my favorite forms and it's very simple, hopefully, and I'll talk you through it. I'll, we'll do it three times. So we start with hands by the side and we raise the arms, waving the hands through the clouds. Turtle treads water. Cross the wrists in front, snow rabbit digs the earth. Keep the wrists crossed as you roll the palms out. Keep the wrists crossed as you go under and over and separate. Fair Maiden scoops water and spreads it far. Form loose fists, lotus buds form. Draw the lotus buds down into the soil and open the palms, lotus flower blossoms. Bring the one hand in front of the chest and twist at the waist, pressing the wind to the right and to the left. Palm on palm, lifting the sky. Roll the palms down, pressing the earth. If you're standing, bend the knees, scooping from the sea. White crane spreads wings, diagonal flying. Other side. Cross the wrists in front. Snow rabbit plows the earth. So that's one form of lotus. Let's do it again now. Waving the hands through the clouds. Turtle treads water. Snow rabbit digs the earth.
Fair Maiden scoops water and spreads it far. Lotus buds form. And blossom. Pressing the wind to the right and to the left. Lifting the sky, pressing the earth, scooping from the sea. White crane spreads wings. Other side. Snow rabbit plows the earth. Waving the hands through the clouds once more. Turtle. Snow rabbit. Fair maiden. Lotus. Pressing the wind. On the side. Lifting, pressing, scooping, white crane, side, snow rabbit. Raising the arms to finish. Moving into our closing form. And if you're standing, bring your feet together. Breathing in and breathing out. And two more of those. Last one, breathing out, bringing the hands back to the resting place. And then finishing the practice with our Tai Chi salute, remembering that's a loose right fist, open left palm, left thumb just resting over the hollow made by that right loose fist at, at about chest height, if you're standing, push the hips back. If you're sitting, just shoulders slightly forward. Just to acknowledge the closing of our Tai Chi practice. Thank you everybody for participating and thank you Jane very much for leading us today.